One, two, one and two and ready and. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Hi, and welcome to the tutorial section for this video of Andante and March by Andrew C. Fox. It's a wonderful piece for any trombonist, and I love the fact that it includes dynamics and articulations throughout. The dynamics at the end are a little bit thin, and we're going to flesh that out later in the video. The main thing I'd like to talk with you today about is the use of alternate positions in several parts of the piece that will make it sound more characteristic and also make it easier to play. The first one is right at the very beginning in the first two measures of A. I like to play that high D in fourth position. I think it makes it smoother. Here is the first two measures with that high D in the first position as we normally play it. <laughs> Here is the high D in fourth position. By playing it there, it allows you to slow your air down just a tiny bit as you move your slide to third, and therefore you do not have to tongue from the D to the C. <laughs> At the end of the third measure of A, there is a B flat. I like to play it in fifth position, and I'll show you why. First of all, here is what it looks like when it's played in first position. Now here it is in fifth position. For the same reason that I played the D in fourth before, I like this B in fifth because then I can go from fifth position and move my slide quickly to second for the A, slowing my air down a tiny bit, and therefore I do not have to tongue that A. I can do a real slur to it. <laughs> there's a high D. Normally we play that in first position. I like to play that particular D in fourth, but let me show you an example of why by showing you first what it looks like when we play it in first position. <laughs> as a way to get my air moving fast enough in fourth position that all I have to do is slide my slide from fourth to third in order to get that E flat really easily. In the sixth measure of letter B, there are two Fs. I like to play the first one in sixth and the second one in first, but let me first play the fifth measure and the sixth measure of letter B with all of those Fs in first position. <laughs> to play the fifth and sixth measures of B with that first F in the sixth measure in sixth position. The reason is the two notes before it are a B flat in first, then I move my slide down to fourth position for the G, and then I can just keep going down to sixth position for that dotted quarter note F. Now the F after it is a 16th note. I will go ahead and play that in first because my slide is already working my way back up. <laughs> Two measures before C is another one of those places where I like to play the F in sixth position. To show you first what it looks like and sounds like in first position, take a look at this. <laughs> I like to play this F in sixth is I can now play the F in sixth, slide 
up as I, my note goes down to a D in fourth, then slide up as my note goes down to an A in second. Because I'm slowing my air down a little bit as my slide is coming up, I do not have to tongue the D or the A. Here is what it looks and sounds like. <laughs> Four bars from the end of the andante, I like to play that A in sixth position. You can play it in second fairly easily though. This is what it looks like when we go ahead and play that A in second position. <laughs> Here is the A in sixth position. It allows me to play that A and then slur right down to the G in fourth position. Also, slide movement wise, I think it's smoother and less jerky going back and forth than if we went ahead and played that A in second. Here it is. <laughs> Let's take a look at a couple of spots in the march. After letter A, the third measure and the fourth measure, and by the way, it's the same thing after letter C, the third measure and the fourth measure, there's a high D. I like to play that one in fourth position, but here is what it looks and sounds like in first. And now here it is in fourth position. Just like we did earlier in the andante, by playing it in fourth, it allows me to slur up to the C in third, and by slowing my air down a tiny bit, I can get that note without needing to tongue it. After letter D, the second and third measures, I like to play those B flats in fifth position instead of first. I want you to see how jerky the motion is and how much I have to move my slide when I don't do this and play those B-flats in first position. And now here it is with those B-flats in fifth position. I like this for a couple of reasons. Number one, it allows me to play the B-flat in fifth, slow my air down as I pull my slide up to fourth, so therefore I do not have to tongue that G, and then I can go back to fifth position by speeding my air up, and I don't have to tongue the B-flat. The second thing I like about it is you're going five, four, five for the B-flat, G, B-flat, and then it's just four, five, four for the next three notes, G, F-sharp, G. As I said at the beginning of the tutorial, Fox does a beautiful job including articulations and dynamics in this piece. The one place where the dynamics are not included is about six measures after letter E in the march. You'll notice that there are some accented notes and then it kind of all of a sudden is at fortissimo. If you just play everything here loud at the same dynamic, it's pretty boring and sounds like this. I like to add some dynamic contrast by making a big crescendo throughout this section. So that first accented note, I like to keep that part at about a mezzo piano. Then the next measure where there's an accented note, I'm going to play that mezzo forte. The next one, I'm going to play forte. And then finally, I get to the fortissimo that's written in the music. It's much more exciting to listen to. Here it is. Thank you so much for watching the tutorial section of this video. I hope that it adds to your enjoyment as you continue working and learning on Dante and March by Andrew C. Fox. Just a note about the performance section at the beginning of the video. This was recorded live at a concert called Don Winston and Friends. Don Winston puts together a low brass recital twice a year in Port Washington, which is on Long Island, New York. It's a wonderful event that includes some of the finest trombone, euphonium, and tuba players from all across the country. If you go on Facebook, you can look for Don Winston and Friends to watch recordings of previous concerts, and you might even catch a live stream performance 
of a concert in the future. Thank you once again so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me at thetromboneplace at gmail.com. Thank you again, and we'll see you soon.